I was just standing here hurt my back. Oh. You did? Yeah. Oh, I'm videoing. Hi. <laughs> Episode two, we have gotten just a lot of questions about us in the past and our and our blog and stuff. So we thought we'd just do a quick Q and A. I know Jill's queued up on a lot of the kinds of questions that we've been asked. So let's uh, okay. just start. And, and by the way, feel free to ask others. We're, we'll answer them as as time and uh, opportunity permit. Absolutely. Okay. So one of the questions that we got was, how did we meet? I mean, that's an obvious one because you and I are in an age gap relationship. Yeah. Marriage. So how did we meet? How did we meet? Tell us the story. <laughs> so Michael was married before and had two sons. And while they were living here in Idaho, his sons were good friends with my cousins. And so when I would come visit my cousins, uh, all of us would hang out as a big group and oftentimes at Michael's home. So I knew him, I knew about him growing up. And so when I was reintroduced to him after my first couple years of college and I bumped into him in Boise and I was like, hey, I know you and we got to talking. And, and so it was just really kind of a natural thing for us as we kind of got to know each other a little bit more. And we've been together ever since, easy peasy. I thought she was out of her mind. Whatever, what was she gonna do with <laughs> an old fart like me? But you know what? It works. And again, going back to what I'd said earlier, age is just a number. It really is. It's kind of a hard thing to get used to, but it is. It, I'm mean, a hard thing to get used to. It took a couple of years before I finally felt like, you know, normal in our relationship. And now, I don't think every, twice every, about it. Every once in a while, somebody brings it up. I'm going, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's this big age gap. I kind of forgot. But it's wonderful. I, I highly recommend it if the chemistry's right. If the chemistry's not right. And, and it's, it's not for everyone, but if you find yourself in that situation. And I was far from rich, so she's not a gold digger. If she's a gold digger, she's digging in the wrong mine. So, yeah, that's how we met, and that's why we're together. And uh, it's working great. One of the other questions that we got was, and I thought this one was really interesting, <laughs> were you always this adventurous, like, in our individual lives? Or was this something that kind of came about once we got together? I've been adventurous for a long time, um, but not nearly like we are together now. I've been scuba diving since 1976, so I've got a lot of years of scuba diving, but but not like the scuba diving we do now. It was just, I grew up in California, so we went scuba diving at Catalina and just off the beach of Laguna Beach and stuff like that, but I only went on one tropical vacation, no, two tropical vacations first, and now almost every year we go on a tropical vacation somewhere. and. Uh, We've logged a lot of scuba diving hours, a lot. So I've done that, and I did a little bit of backpacking back in the 80s, up in the Sierra Nevadas. And uh, again, it was just such a different experience back then because it was, the weights were so heavy and the equipment was uh, just a lot different. Really bulky and... I could say without equivocation, the uh, hiking that we do now is so much more fun, so much more relaxing, and we get so much more out of it. And even Idaho, the, the hiking is really aggressive. Um, it's not a big deal when you're only carrying 20 pounds on your back. As opposed to 80? As opposed to 80, <laughs> yeah. That's a big change. Even with the age difference now, I mean, it, of being in my 60s instead of my 30s, um, it's so much easier and so much more enjoyable. We we're, we we're, we were in our early 30s. I was with my two best friends. Uh, Dale and Dwayne and we bumped into this guy who's like 50 something and he was kind of huffing and puffing and we met him at Trailhead and you always talk when you're at Trailheads you know just hey you know what's up the what's up the road a little ways and stuff he was coming down we were going up and I remember after talking to him I thought that would be so cool to still be able to backpack when I'm 50 I can't imagine it's gonna happen and indeed, right after just a few hikes in the Sierras, I just thought, this is just too hard, even back in my 30s, and I stopped hiking. But now here I am, 60-something, and boom, we're back at it, and we're hiking harder yeah. harder than ever. We, we hike, we usually do two or three fairly significant backpacking trips each year, so we, we hike we hike a lot. Last year, I hiked 
I logged over 100 miles. No, that's total. I logged 100 miles on my boots. So for me, I have always enjoyed traveling. Um, as a child from a large family, we used to go and visit extended family. That was probably the most travel that I've ever done as a kid. But one of the things that my mom really liked to do was we'd get together with cousins and that either meant we'd, I remember this one time we drove and we just found this hotel that had a swimming pool in the middle of it. And we just, we got a room for a night and two big families crammed in one big room. They didn't, they didn't charge you by the person back then, but it was so much fun to have a slumber party in this town that we'd never been in before at this hotel that we didn't know and just go swimming and just spend time with our cousins. So that, that's kind of my background there. Um, as far as outdoorsy stuff, I grew up with two brothers just older than me. I'm from a large family. I'm one of 11. And so having two brothers just older than me, I know that my dad spent a lot of time with my brothers getting them through their scouting program. And I was able to see all the fun things that they could do, but again, that was because they were in scouts. And so I always saw the things that they did and wanted to do the things that they did. Never really had that opportunity until um, Michael and I got together. And so that has really been exciting to say, this is something that I've always wanted to do, that I've not yet had the opportunity to do. And then he says, okay, and we go and we do it. And it is, it is the greatest thing. And I think um, it hasn't always been easy. Um, we were really nervous about whether the two of us were gonna be able to backpack at all because, oh gosh, how many years has it been? In 2009, we were in an accident where we both broke our ankles and we thought that's it, we're done. There's no way we can ever do that. And yet, we, you know, through physical therapy and, and going to the gym on a regular basis and working out and staying healthy, we're able to still do that. So I think that's really awesome. So there we are. Here's one that I'll bring up. <clears throat> so how do we do this? Especially a lot of people in their 60s probably say, how do you still scuba dive? How do you still, you know, backpack? And, you know, we do 20, 30, 40 mile backpacking trips. You know, how do you do that? It's easy for her. She's in her 30s, right? So how do I do that? We, how many years ago did we start, <laughs> did we start working out? We're 2013. Both, we were both a little flabby, to say the least. And we wanted some help. We wanted to know the right way to try to get back into shape. So working with this trainer, he taught us the skills that we needed and we just hit it really hard. We were in the gym. Once we got into it and understood what it was all about, we were in the gym three or four times a week. Um, and at the beginning, it was not easy. It hurt a lot, <laughs> but it was amazing to see the transformation in our bodies. And, and this is after our accident. And we just really got very, very fit to the point where Jill actually started becoming a competitive figure competitive figure competitor okay whatever I don't know how to say it <laughs> she competed in contests local contests here as a figure competitor and in every single contest she's been in she has placed in the top three mm -hmm. and so she's done really really well in fact has become so adept at the whole idea behind it she's become a, a personal trainer so she trains me now I don't have to pay for a personal trainer anymore which is always kind of nice <laughs> so we got ourselves in in good shape and then we started doing things we started pushing the limit of what we thought we could do and found out we could do whatever we wanted to do pretty much and that's the key what we wanted there's a lot of things I don't want to climb Mount Everest or any other mountain as far as that goes I'm not a mountain climber I'm a hiker no we do have an intense fascination with all things Mount Everest that's a different episode oh. but yeah anyway but anyway, that's you know that's why why we could still do these things and, and remain active. And I think we firmly believe that a body in motion state tends to stay in motion, and a body at rest tends to stay at rest. So we try to stay in motion. Yeah, and we're not perfect by any means. There are many many times where we find ourselves at rest, and we say, okay, we gotta we gotta get out of this. We know how this part ends. We need to make sure that we're still in motion so that we're able to do the things that we want to do. One last question. All right. Okay. We do have a trip coming up. That's one of the questions that we were asked. What's the next adventure that we're going on? We'll share that with you at another time. But one last question. Is there any place in the world that is like the ultimate destination for you that you just are looking forward to going to? Okay, and what's yours? 
I'm going to have to think about it. Oh, you asked a question <laughs> you don't know the answer to. Uh, I've been wanting to travel the uh, South Pacific. It's mm -hmm. so expensive. It takes so long to get there that I, when we go, I want to be able to stay for as long as we can. That's hard to do when you're both working full-time jobs. You get so. two, two weeks vacation. You're not going to mm -hmm. see very much there. No. So just throughout the South Pacific, lots of islands, Palau, uh, Papua New Guinea. Um, we want to go through French, French Polynesia. We want to uh, just all over the South Pacific. Just enjoy the heat, like the long-term year-round heat and be able to dive. So for me, one of the places that I really wanted to go to, I've already been to, so I have to check that off the list. I've already been to Germany. Um, but I think I am really looking forward to doing some travel in Southeast Asia. So maybe uh, Cambodia, um, Vietnam, <laughs> maybe Thailand. That kind of area. So that's kind of what I've got my eye on right now. And we'll see what happens. And she has been bugging me for the last five years that she wants to go to New Zealand. I still can't figure out why or what we're going to do if we go I there. Know. I don't but once we get that part that. figured out, then yeah, we'll look at poss possibly New Zealand. I'm thinking maybe a backpacking trip in New Zealand. Hey. But we'll see. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so that's probably more than enough for this set of Q&A. We'll answer more questions. If you have questions, ask us. And Send we'll them be... our way. Yep, there you go. See you next time.